Hi, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use JSF forms and managed beans. Here's a list of topics that we'll cover. First off, we'll find out what are managed beans. Then we'll discuss the requirements for creating a managed bean. Next, we'll discuss how to create a managed bean with code. Then we'll discuss JSF expression language for accessing managed beans. And then we'll learn how to set a managed bean property from the JSF page. And likewise, we'll learn how to get or read the managed bean property from a JSF page. All right, so we have a lot of good things in store. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. The common question that's often asked from new developers with JSF is, well, what exactly is a managed bean? Well, a managed bean is simply a regular Java class. It's commonly used to hold the form data. So when you submit a form, it'll hold the form data for you. You can also use managed beans to hold your business logic, and we'll cover that later in the course. Now, the main idea here is that the bean is actually created and managed by JSF, hence the name of managed bean. Your, your code will not have to manually create the bean. It'll be automatically created by the JSF system. One thing that's very important is that managed beans are not to be confused with enterprise Java beans or EJBs. EJBs are a totally different technology, a totally different subject. So don't mix the two up. Managed beans are not the same as enterprise Java beans. This diagram here is a very good layout of how you can use managed beans in a JSF application. So notice in the top left, we have the student form.xhtml. This is where the user will actually enter their form data. They'll hit the submit button. Behind the scenes, what JSF will do is it'll actually set data on a managed bean. So remember, the managed bean holds your form data. Then it goes over to the student confirmation.xhtml, another page. And then this page can actually access that managed bean and read data from that managed bean. So it'll basically read the form data that was submitted on the previous page. So they'll read in the student's first name along with the student's last name and give a confirmation page. And I'll show you how all this works here in a second. All right, so let me switch over and show you a live demo of this example. So again, this is our student form HTML. I can enter the user's first name and last name, and then I can move down and hit the submit button. Once I hit the submit button, in the background, JSF will take that form data use that managed bean, store the information in the managed bean, and then it'll send us over to our response page or confirmation page, and this person can access that managed bean or read in that information from the managed bean. So this all works out pretty good. Now I'll actually show you all the low-level code on how to make this happen in this video. Now you may wonder, what are the requirements for creating a managed bean? I mean, how do I create the code? Well, first off, it's just a regular Java class and you have to follow these rules. So your Java class needs to have a public, no argument constructor. It also needs to expose properties via public getter and setter methods. And finally, your class needs to make use of an annotation at managed bean. Uh, this is actually a new feature of JSF2. Uh, in previous versions, you actually had to configure all these beans via config file, but the annotation support is a new feature of JSF2. Now that we understand the theory behind managed beans, uh, let's go ahead and look at some code and see how we can actually create our own managed bean from scratch. So what I'll do is I'll move into Eclipse. I'm gonna make use of that same project we've been using so far, that Hello World project. So we're not gonna create a new one, we're simply gonna use the existing one. So if you don't have the Hello World, just go back to the previous videos where I showed you how to set up the Hello World example. Now. In the Java resources directory, I'm gonna actually create a new Java class. So I'll make use of this package, com love to code dot JSF dot hello. And I'll create this new class called student. This is gonna be my managed bean. Now hit the finish button in the bottom corner. So to create a basic stub here for a student class. Now, since this is a managed bean, I need to make use of that annotation, at managed bean. So I just say at managed bean. Now, 
we don't have this imported yet, so we need to do an explicit import for this uh, managed bean. Now, one area to be very careful of is that there's two managed bean classes, uh, one in the javax.faces.bean package and another one in javax annotation. Here, you want to be sure to use javax faces bean. That's for JSF managed beans. All right, so we have this annotation imported properly. Now, what I'd like to do is create two fields uh, for this class. So I'd like to create a first name field and a last name field, and they're both strings. Now, if you remember from the uh, slides, the first thing we need to do is create a no argument constructor. So remember, we create a constructor by simply using the same name as the class, and we have no return type. So that's our no art constructor, and that's in place, and we kind of meet that one requirement there. Next, what we need to do is create getter and setter methods to expose properties. So we need to have public getter and setter methods. Now, what I could do is I could manually write these out, uh, but what I'll do is actually make use of a neat trick in Eclipse where Eclipse can actually generate source code for you. And Eclipse can generate the getters and setters. So I'll right click, I'll choose source, and then I'll move down to this entry, generate getters and setters. Hmm, looks very interesting. So I can use this feature here to automatically generate source code for me. So they'll bring up a dialog box. They'll give you a list of all of your fields that you have, and they'll ask you which ones you want to create getters and setters with. So I'll choose both of them, first name and last name. You can set some other options here, but I'll go ahead and keep the defaults and I'll hit OK. And now Eclipse just did a lot of good work for us. This is very interesting here. So it created getters and setter methods. So it created a get first name, set first name. And that was created automatically by Eclipse. And it also did a similar thing here for last name, a get last name and set last name. So again, a very nice tip here where Eclipse can generate source code for you. So we're in good shape right now. We have our public no art constructor. We have our getter and setter methods, and we have our managed bean. So everything is um, all lined up just right for us. This looks really good. Good job so far. The JSF expression language is used to access properties of a managed bean. So you've seen this syntax earlier, but I didn't really have a chance to give a full discussion on it, and I'll do that now. So the basic syntax of it is you give a pound with a curly brace and you give the bean name dot the property name. This will allow you to access that property either to read the data or to set the data. Um, I'll show you some examples of this coming up as far as using it with forms and also with confirmation pages. So here's an example of setting a managed bean property from a JSF page. So if you have a form set up, you can make use of the input text and you say value equals and then you have student dot first name. So what happens is that when you actually submit the form, JSF will call student dot set first name. All right. So note here the property name, JSF will automatically call set first name or set whatever that given property name is. We just saw an example of setting a bean property. Well, how do, you, how do you actually read or get a bean property in a JSF page? So to get a property, you simply use, make use of the JSF expression language. So here's an output saying student's name is, I use the pound curly brace, and then I say student dot first name. So again, I give the bean name, which is student dot the property. In the background, uh, JSF will actually call student dot get first name. So note here, student dot get whatever that property name. And here our property name is first name. They're actually calling methods in our Java bean or our managed bean uh, in the background when they process this page. So let's go ahead and pull this together with an example. Uh, in this example, I'm going to have two JSF pages. I'll have a student form.xhtml where they'll enter the data. I'll have a second page called studentconfirmation.xhtml and we'll make use of that managed bean that we created a little earlier in this video. All right, so let's switch into Eclipse. 
uh, what I'll do is I'll first uh, take a look at two files here, like I mentioned earlier, studentform.xhtml and studentconfirmation.xhtml. So let's go ahead and start with the form. So we've seen a lot of this stuff before. I'm not going to cover all the, the high level stuff, but what I will do is just highlight the form and we'll cover the aspects of the form. So on line 14, what we'll do is we will uh, give a label for first name. We'll make use of this JSF UE component input text. And then the value that we'll have here is student.firstName. So when we actually submit the form data in the background, JSF will call student.setFirstName. Now, JSF also makes use of this when they show the form for the first time by calling a getter on it, but we'll, we'll cover that later. Now for last name, also a similar thing for this input text. So in that form field, we'll have student.lastName. So when they actually do a submit, JSF will call student.setLastName. And then finally, here's our submit button, which is our command button again, right? And then the action, this is where we tell it the actual um, code to call. So here we're actually gonna send it over to a confirmation page, student response. And as we learned earlier, this will actually call studentresponse.xhtml, but we don't have to give the explicit extension. Uh, JSF will call that xhtml by default. Now let's go ahead and look at that studentresponse.xhtml uh, file. So this is really just a confirmation page of saying, hey, we, this is the information that we read in. So moving down here to the body, I just have some normal outputs, some static text. The student is confirmed. And then we'll make use of the JSF expression language. I'll say student.firstName. So it's going to call that managed bean and say student.getFirstName. It's going to read the data. We'll do a similar thing here for the last name. Well, we'll have student.lastName. So student.getLastName is what JSF will call in the background. And that's basically the, how it works with setting up a, a confirmation page here for JSF. Now let's go ahead and run this application and here's the output for it. So we have our form. Uh, we get the first name and the last name. I'll enter John for the first name, Doe for the last name, and I'll hit submit. And then we'll get the results. The student is confirmed. And again, this is our confirmation page and they'll drop in the student.firstName and they'll also drop in student.lastName, which is actually making use of our managed bean in the background. So this looks really good. We looked at all the different components and we pulled it all together with the nice coding example. Good job. All right, so in summary, in this video, we learned what managed beans are. We also learned about the coding requirements for a managed bean, and we created a managed bean from scratch. We also discussed the JSF expression language and how we can use it to set bean properties from a JSF page, and also how to read bean properties from a JSF page. Well, this wraps up the video. In this video, we learned how to use JSF forms and managed beans. We also got a detailed view of how to create the managed beans and how to use them in our JSF pages.